Hello everybody, the 2022-23 Premier League season is nearly up on us and it is that time of the year again where I give you my Premier League predictions where I will try and do a little bit better than what I did last year because last year's effort was a shambles, wasn't it, Tomasi? It wasn't too bad, mate. It wasn't too bad. You got one or two right, but then there was a few that were... Drastically wrong. A few places off that you, you got called out on. Okay, but this year, okay, I am not currently signed for a Premier League team so you can I'm be just, honest I can be honest I don't have any skin in the game and I'm going to fully fully try and do my best this year first of all though need to give a massive shout out to Nike because we have got two of these brand new 2022 23 Premier League match balls to give away they are absolutely beautiful it's the 30th anniversary of the Premier League and it's like inspired by the old mitre Premier League balls. They are beautiful. Bit of gold on it, the old school lettering. Nice, aren't they, Tomasi? Yeah, they're beautiful. Do you know what? We did a video the other day and um, I haven't played football for years. I couldn't believe how hard they were when you boot them. What? I'd like my... I had actual Premier League balls like are pumped actual up. Actual Premier League balls that are pumped up are quite different to a uh, Power League type ball. For sure. Anyway, make sure you watch the whole video because you're going to have to watch it to learn how to win these balls. Right, Tomasi, let's get into it. This is what we're going to do, OK? We're going to be picking the names out of a hat at complete randomness. We'll touch on how we did last year and then I'll give you my prediction for this year. The scoring system is like the most famous YouTube scoring system in the world. If you get that selection bob on, like if I say Man City are going to finish first and they do finish first, I get zero points. Nothing added to the tally. However, if Man City went and finished ninth, that would be eight points. I would lose eight points and I don't want that, all right? So hopefully try and do as well as I can. Yeah, the idea is to get the lowest score possible. Beautiful. And we are informed that around 60 points is a is a valiant effort. Boom. Let's get into it. First team. Right. First team. You ready? We have got... Oh, one of the big boys. Liverpool. Straight away into it. Okay. Right. Where did I where did I say Liverpool were going to finish last year? You said Liverpool would finish fourth. Ooh. They finished second. Yeah, I just I just thought that the season before, you know, they'd, they'd give it all. I thought they might die off a little bit last season. They didn't die off last season. They were up there all the way, live and kicking until the very last game of the season. Yeah, I, I, I think it's understandable that I put them fourth. However, this season, this season, I'm going to go for third. Yeah, I think, there's two, I think there's going to be two better teams in Liverpool this year. I think... Losing Sadio Mane, I think they're in a little bit of a transition period. I can't see them trying to be up there and about trying to win the Premier League. I just can't. But I still think they're gonna they'll, they'll do decent third position. That surprises me that did because we talked about it yesterday on the train, didn't we? When we were saying it's um, a little bit kind of Ferguson esque in the, in the fact it feels like they're at the start of a rebuild. Yep, exactly that front three: um, Salah, Mane, Firmino, kind of. It's sort of dissipating a little bit, isn't it? Obviously, yeah. my, um, Salah signing a new contract. Br brilliant news. Fantastic news. However, Darwin Nunes kind of unproven in the Premier League. Jota, very, very good. Don't get me wrong. Um, Diaz, absolutely world class. But it's going to be interesting to see how the new boy, Darwin Nunes, does next season. A lot of pressure on the shoulders. It is, yeah. Third. That's a surprising one for me, actually. Okay, team number two. Who we got? Oh, another big boy, Tottenham. Interesting. Ooh, okay. Spurs. Okay, so where did I predict Tottenham to finish last season? You said they would finish sixth. And they finished fourth. Know, they finished fourth. Yeah. But you said last year it was all the chatter was around Harry Kane, if they keep Kane yeah. and, and so on and so forth. But it was a it was a funny year for Spurs, wasn't it? I think what I said last season was Harry Kane obviously handed in the transfer request, wanted to move to Man City. The move didn't come. And I think my words were, um, I think that will upset him this season. I think it will rock the boat so much that Spurs won't have a great season. Harry Kane won't have a great season and Spurs won't have a great season. However, fair play to Harry Kane. He came, came back, got straight back in the team, scored the goals that you know that he normally would. Um, and that's the reason why I predicted them to finish sixth. I think this season, though, I think this season they've made some exciting signings and yeah. they've done them early doors as well. They've got them done, wrapped up, 
behind closed doors and they've all been training for already a few weeks so I think going into the season they're going to be sort of locked and loaded and good to go um, Hun Ming Song last season Flames you know for a fact he's just going to carry on where he left off um, it's going to be an interesting season for, for Spurs so so let me give you my prediction for Spurs come on in I'm going to go for fourth fourth yeah I'm going to go for fourth again I don't think they've quite got the, the quality to be mixing it with the big boys at the very very top end but I think they are going to be in the Champions League spaces again okay third team out the hat right third team out the hat who've we got ooh Southampton interesting okay where did I predict Southampton last season 16th finished 15th Oh, that's not a bad little prediction. Honourable effort. Um, I think Southampton started the season really well and then absolutely nosedived after Christmas. They, they, they had a lot of points on the board and it's almost like they were on the beach early doors. I've been there myself. I've been in teams that have done that and it's very easy to do. Um, I just think that they might carry on the end of last season's form into this season. It's a very hard habit to shake. Once you get into that, that losing mode, it's hard to get the confidence back. They haven't really made any big signings. Lost a few players. Um, I worry for Southampton this season. Do you? I worry for Southampton this season. Um, so much so, I think they might even be in the relegation zone. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for 18th place. Big shout, big shout. It's a big shout and I like Southampton. They're a lovely club. They are, they're a family club. I've got friends that have played for Southampton. They, they only say good things about it, but I think it's going to be a tough season this year. Okay. I think Joe Aribo is a good signing from Rangers. Yeah, for sure. Super Very good, good player. player. Looks really, really good. Might, a bit more. might need a bit more. Exactly, might need a bit more. Right, let's have a look who we got. Leeds. Ooh. Interesting one, this one. Very interesting. Where did I say last season for Leeds? Tenth. And 17th, they finished. They just about scraped it. Last game of the season for Leeds. Um, again, I think it's going to be another tough season for them. Rafinha, obviously, straight out the door. Calvin Phillips, out the door. Two of their biggest players. Two of the most influential players. And they're going to miss them. Um, they are recruiting. They are signing players. They're spending money on players. Um, but still, I think it's going to be a really... Not Premier League players, though. No. So a lot of foreign players. And you wonder sometimes when teams sign five or six you wonder if they can just go like that I know um, I do like the manager though I love Jesse Marsh um, I just think it's. Got, I, I don't think they're going to get relegated but I think they'll struggle a bit more I think they're losing like I say losing Calvin Phillips and Rafinha t they're two big boys um, it's going to be a tough, for, a tough season for them I've got them down as 16th place interesting yeah, yeah. happy with that your predictions pal alright whatever right next team out the hat let's go we are cooking Newcastle. Oh, that's an interesting it's one. It's a really good one. Right, Newcastle last season, you said 19. They finished 11th. Now, up to Christmas, you'd have been absolutely bang on yeah. there or thereabouts, wouldn't you? But, I mean, the bounce from Eddie Howe was insane. Insane. To be fair to them, they recruited really, really well. They got that sort of level of players where you know what you're going to get from them. They're, they're sort of tried and trusted and tested players that are guaranteed to give you a 7 out of 10 every single week. Started with Kieran Trippier and just keep, even like players like Dan Byrne. You know, they're invaluable. A Newcastle lad anyway, he's always going to pull the club in the right direction. Um, like you say, before before the transfer window opened, you would have worried for Newcastle. However, their, their, their January transfer window was first class, absolutely top. The manager got the team going. They just went full steam ahead and pulled themselves out of it with like 10 games to go. It was absolutely incredible. And I think this season, they're only going to get better and better. And I think they've got this real nice sort of buzz about the place i think they're still going to sign maybe three or four big names big players i can see them finishing ninth this season wow okay. top 10 do you think that would be a win for newcastle fans a top 10 finish this season for newcastle is incredible i've been listening to a lot of people say they might even sneak top six and all that kind nah. of stuff i can't quite see that because i think it's such a big turnaround but top 10 finish is a massive season for newcastle yeah nice right next up Let's have a look who we got. It is... Da, 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 Fulham. Oh, yes. One of the newly promoted teams. Didn't give them a rating last season, obviously, because they're in the championship. But they absolutely cruised the championship, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And the big question on everyone's lips is the big tank, Alexandra Mitrovic, going to get... 
15 goals that he needs that he needs for his team to stay up well he's ne- he, he, the, the big problem we've always had with Alexander Mitrovic is he'll get relegated he'll score an absolute boatload of goal like he's done in the last three or four years in the championship and then when he gets into the Premier League never quite does it right that's always been the problem Last year, I've got to say, he looked a little bit leaner. He looked a little bit meaner. And the amount of goals he scored in the championship, what was it, 40, whatever. three was it? It's stupid. It was an outrageous total. I honestly don't think that'll ever be beaten again, okay? I really don't think it'll be beaten. But I do really like Marco Silva. Um, a lot of the Watford lads buzzed off him when he was there. Um, said really good things about him. He drives the team. He pushes the team. I think, I think he can get just enough out of Fulham this season. Really? Just enough that I think they're going to scrape by. I think they're going to finish 17th. They're they're going to be the last team to avoid the relegation. Interesting. Right, next up, from the Zwift cap. From the Zwift cap. Let's see who we got. It is Leicester. I'm intrigued on this one. Okay, where did did I predict them to finish last season? So you predicted fifth. They finished eighth. Decent guess. Yeah, it's not a million miles off. Um, a little bit underwhelmed with Leicester last season. I think um, everybody expected big things. They started the season well. They kind of had a bit of a lull period from Christmas onwards um, where they dropped a few points, disappointing performances. We actually played them towards the end of the season. I think second last game of the season, they were incredible. Um, they pumped you, didn't they? They pumped us like 4-0 or 5-0 four, four, or, or something. They were incredible, honestly. The, the big boys, James Madison, um, Harvey Barnes, Tielemans, Jamie Vardy, they were flying, mate, honestly. They were absolutely absolutely cooking Europa um, League yeah uh, sorry the Conference League they were in weren't they so yeah, exactly, that might have yeah. taken a bit of steam it does I think I always think that anyway I think every season the team that gets in the Europa Conference uh, um, the Europa League I think at some point it will take a toll on their Premier League campaign yeah. and it and it was proven the same even West Ham you know they're doing really well in the Europa Conference um, sorry in the Europa League then they sort of have a little lull in the Premier League, which is understandable. You need a massive squad to be able to do it all. Um, Leicester this season, though, I think just going off how well they played against us towards the end of the season, the excitement still around the place, the energy, the buzz. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they can keep hold of T- Tielemans because he's getting linked with absolutely everybody. But I'm still predicting a strong finish for them next year. I'm going to go seventh. Okay, very good. That'd be a good season. Yeah, a good season. Right, next team. At random, out of the Zwift hat. Oh, Wolves. Wolves. Where did they finish last year? You predicted 12th. They finished 10th. And your big concern last year was losing Rui Patricio in goal. Yeah. However. However. Jose Sa, to be fair. Big boy. Big boy signing. Um, big boots to fill in Rui Patricio, but came in seamless as like you wouldn't believe. Just came in. No problem whatsoever. Save after save was one of the outstanding goalkeepers actually last year. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of rumours with with Wolves whether people like Matinho or Neves going to get a move somewhere. But I can't see it myself personally. I think they're too too valuable to Wolves for them to try and let them go. I think Wolves are one of them teams now. They've really had that fair play to them. Massive credit. They've established themselves as a really good solid Premier League. Team, so what are you saying, they? Premier League champs? Definitely not Premier League ah. champs, even though you are a Wolves fan and this is not the news you want to hear. But I still see Wolves as a, like a really nice, steady Premier League team. So I'm going to go top 10, but only just 10th position. Nice. Next team, really well folded up, is... Oh, the team that I'm wearing currently, Arsenal. Where did I predict them last season, Tomasi? So you predicted eight. Finished fifth. Okay, tell us about what Arteta is doing and the project. Okay, I think um, I think if you'd looked at the start of their season last year, you would have said, yeah, I think there's a good chance they'll finish eighth. Yeah, they were struggling, weren't they? Got off to a horrific start, getting battered week in, week out. Brentford, uh, Man City, it was horrible. He was getting the sack at one Mate, point. At one point, Mikel Arteta was the favourite to get sacked. It was outrageous. Uh, they had that game against Newcastle where I think if they'd have lost or drawn, he would have gone. But they won the game and then, quite honestly, they, they just kicked on from there. Um, it, obviously, a very disappointing end to the season for Arsenal, you know. Slipping out of the Champions League places with a couple of games to go is a killer. It's a dagger to the heart. But massive signing, Gabriel Jesus. Massive, massive signing. If 
you know, Gabby Jesus, I, I honestly just don't think gets the credit that he deserves. He's playing for Man City and people think he should be scoring five goals a game. Do you know what I mean? It don't work like that sometimes. Man City don't play like that. They play cutbacks and you, you're getting midfield overloads into the box and so everybody else will score goals. It's the way that it goes. But I think Arsenal have been crying out for that guy for a long time and I think he's going to do really well this year. I do think Arsenal will do well this season. I think they'll win some big games against some big teams, but I think they're just going to miss out on Champions League. Fifth position for Arsenal. Next up. Next up, we have Bournemouth. Oh, one of the newly promoted teams. Um, our editor, Frank, is season ticket out holder Bournemouth. All he keeps telling us is that they're going to do it this year. They're going to kill it. They're going to smash the Premier League. Unfortunately, mate, I'm going to have to disagree with you a little bit here, Frank. All right. It's going to be a tough old season for Bournemouth. If, if, to be honest, right, if you're a newly promoted team, Staying in the Premier League the next season is the biggest ask, yeah? It's the most difficult thing to do. Fair play to Brentford last year because they absolutely smashed it. They did really, really well. However, it is so tough, so difficult. The league is getting tougher and tougher every single season. I love Scotty Parker to bits, I do. I think he's going to be a brilliant manager. I think next season is going to be a massive struggle for them, though. It's interesting as well because he doesn't get a mention because of Mitrovic, but Dom Solanke, yep. he's a bit, obviously he was at Liverpool, he's a bit older, he's a bit more mature, he's got a lot of confidence. I think he'll do all right this season. I think he'll do all right this season. I can see him scoring 10 Premier League goals and I, I think, think that's a really good. good season. I do. I could see him scoring 10 goals. It'll be a really good season for him, but I do worry for Bournemouth. I really, really worry um, to the point that they're going to they're gonna take last place. Okay. I'm, I've got to put them as 20th. And Someone's got to. Somebody's got to, and it's not a slight on Bournemouth because I love Bournemouth. They are a lovely, again, family club. They're a family oriented club. Um, Big Frank, the editor, is looking at me with daggers right now. Sorry, mate. Um, but Bournemouth, 20th. Next up. Next up, we have got Crystal Palace. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Where did I say Palace last year? You said 14th. They finished 12th. Ooh. What you're saying? Um, what I'm saying about Palace is right. I think they're going to have a decent year this year. They um, they're a good team, Crystal Palace. We played against them obviously twice last season, and they are a very very good outfit. They've got a lot of pace, a lot of quality, and now with Patrick Vieira, they've got a style of playing which is really difficult to play against. My mate Will Hughes got into the team, never looked back. He's like that little terrier, that little rat that runs yeah. around the place disrupting stuff and kicking people. Wonder the left foot though as well. Beautiful mate, honestly, he's an elegant little player. Um, I'm expecting Palace to do really well this season. They're gonna, they're, they're the kind of team that will beat some of the big boys, yeah? Conor Gallagher's gonna be a big loss though. A big loss for sure, but I still think they've got enough quality in that team and they've got a direction, they've got a manager who's gonna push them. Um, maybe not top 10, I'm gonna go for 13th for Crystal Palace, but a decent season. Good season that. Yep. Right, next up out the hat, we have got Everton. Ooh, Everton. Interesting, this one. This really is, I guarantee you this is where a lot of people went wrong last season. I bet a lot of people would have predicted Everton to be sort of top 10, nearly top 10. That's what you did. What did I do? So you said Everton 7th, finished 16th. Yep. To be fair, they did well to finish 16th. There was one point in the season, I think, with five or six games to go where... We were certain Everton were done. We were certain Everton were done. The, the interesting thing with Everton is, right, when Frank Lampard took over, they tried to play a style of football that they just weren't suited for, yeah? They were trying to pass out and they were trying to play nice football. And then they changed it a bit, tried to go a little bit more direct and they got a little bit more joy. And then I think towards the end of the, end of the season, they found out that Jordan Pickford can kick the ball an absolute mile. Get the ball up there, get around it, get work rate high. Richarlison, if you can get him ticking, you've got a chance. And that's exactly what they did. They managed to win some massive games. Um, but I think just the the way that they've got the team going, Anthony Gordon turned to, turned out to be a bit of a revelation last year as well. Um, but I think they're going to finish 14th this season. I don't think they're going to be too disappointed with that. I don't think they can expect miracles, but I think 14th will do. Come on, Em. We're cooking, by the way. We are absolutely cooking. Don't forget to stay tuned to the end of the video, by the way, because you're going to have to find out how you can win one of these two Premier League balls. They're absolutely beautiful, by the way. Right, Chelsea. Next team out the hat is Chelsea. Boom. Where did I predict last year? So, Chelsea, you predicted second. They finished third. And obviously, your conversational point last year was Lukaku. I don't think anyone saw him having the season he have had last season quite how it panned out so so what are your thoughts on on that 
and obviously this season. Yeah, okay, so um, yeah, I think look at the thing with Lukaku is right, and I said this before. If if you're going to sign Romelu Lukaku, you have to play to his strengths. Yeah, you ha- you have to have a team who kind of work around him, get the ball up to him, get it on his chest, let him lay other people off, and then let him get in the box. Right? And Chelsea just aren't really that team. They've got a front three, front four, wide players of players who like to get it wide, get it in the box, all that kind of stuff. And they didn't really play to his strengths. And I think once it it got off to a it, you know he scored in his debut, fair enough, and everybody thought he was going to rip it up. But then they kind of didn't really go for it. They didn't really play to his strengths. Um, and then when he came out of the team, a little bit of confidence was lost. And then it was inevitable, really. He's not really a Thomas Tuchel type of player. But I wish Romelu Lukaku the best at Inter Milan because he's a great lad and he's a great player. And I think Inter Milan will suit him down to the ground like it did before because they will play to his strengths. However, this season that I put Chelsea. Second. Oh, so same prediction as last season. Same prediction as last season. I love that, mate. Love that. Next one. Right then, next one. Let's go. We are cooking. Getting into the business end, aren't we? Oh, big boys again. Man United. (laughs) What were we saying last year? Where did I predict Man United? Third. They finished sixth. Tell me about this one. I think, again, this is, again, I think, one where a lot of of, of predictions would have gone, gone wrong because... Signing Cristiano Ronaldo, everybody's like, oh my God, they're going to be back. They're going to smash it. The problem isn't Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo did what he was brought in to do, score goals. And that's what you're going to get from Cristiano Ronaldo. I think the rest of it is the problem at Man United. There's just so much speculation around them all the time. There's so much hope and they've they've got to do this. I've got to do this. And then the second they draw or lose a game, it's like the internet melts down. Twitter just goes on an absolute riot. And then players read it, confidence gets shot. You know, all this stuff you constantly... Like Harry Maguire, he could just play a bad ball or slip over or something. And they are out for him, you know. It's it's always going to be this way. And I think this year for Man United, they're just getting linked right, left and centre with players. Frankie de Jong, is it going to go through? Um, Lissandro Martinez, is he going to sign? All this kind of stuff. And it just keeps rumbling on, keeps rumbling on. Um, and I don't think they're going to have their team settled and ready to go by the start of the Premier League season. I'm going to go for sixth. For Man United okay I'm going to go for six for Man United I still don't think they've got enough to be mixing it for the Champions League places um, and it's not going to be as plain sailing as what people think Ten Hag's a great manager and he's going to get them playing a style of football that Man, Man United fans want to see but I still think they haven't got enough to be in the top four no that's fair I had him pegged in the same position yeah. to be fair yeah boom here we go we've only got a few left you know we are cooking oh West Ham West Ham, I liked West Ham last season. Where did I say they'll finish last year? Said they finished 11th and they finished 7th. Yeah. And obviously we were at a uh, Europa final. They had a great season. They did have a great season. Um, like you say, the Europa final is, if they could have won it, it would have been an incredible season for West Ham. Top 10, a Europa Cup, it would have been an incredible season. And it still was an incredible season. It was. It, was, it still was. I think... The, the Europa League exploits, though, it does take it out of you. You're travelling all over the world, you're playing Thursday, Sunday, and you need a massive squad of rotation to be able to do that. And they just fell a little bit short towards the end, West Ham. They just sort of, it's just like the energy dried out a little bit. Jared Bowen, a bit of a revelation last year. Mikel Antonio scoring goals like you know he would do. Craig Dawson coming in and being the man that he is. Ballon Dawson, the main man. Um, but it's going to be a good season. I think top 10, eighth position. Who's next out the hat? We have got oh one of the new boys, Nottingham Forest. Good to see them back in the Premier League. I think Nottingham Forest are one of those teams where they're kind of like a neutral's favourite. Does that make sense? They are. I think it's the history. It's yeah. Brian Clough. All that um, kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but mate, they're a newly promoted team. It's tough. They are. They, if you'd have, if you'd have said to me last January that Nottingham Forest would be in the Premier League next year, I, I would have laughed you out of the room. There was not a chance of it whatsoever. The manager has done wonders with this team, promoted via the playoffs, which I've got to say is probably the best way to get promoted. If you can guarantee a way of doing it, do it through the playoffs because the buzz is phenomenal. It's going to be tough this season, though, yeah. Yeah, I, one, one question. Well, one question I wanted to ask you was, with Dean Henderson going here, this is a massive massive season for him isn't it because yep. he's fallen away with the England reckoning do you think he's got enough time and do you think he's got enough about him to get 
into contention for the World Cup. This move for Dean Henderson will shoot him down to the ground. This is reminiscent of Sheffield United a few years back before him. Um, he's going to a team that are going to have their backs up against the walls. He is going to be making saves right, left and centre. He's going to be the, one of the busiest goalkeepers in the Premier League. Um, and I think that really does suit him. I think it's, this could be a springboard for him to show everybody what he's about, what he's got. And then, like you say, hopefully get himself back into that England team. It's going to be a tough season for Forrest, though, all right? There's no, there's no bones about that. They, they're going to struggle. Unless they spend massively, which I don't think they're going to be able to do, it's going to be a tough old year for them. So much so, I think they're going to get relegated and I think they're going to be 19th. <sighs> Sorry, go. Forrest fans. I do like you, though. I love it. I love your stadium. I love the history of the club. You're frigging ledges. They are. They're frigging ledges. Lovely club. Right, next team out the hat. Who have we got? Brentford. Where did I predict them last year? Because Brentford had a belting season. You predicted 15th. They finished 13th. Decent guess. Um, they look like they're losing Christian Eriksen. Well, they're losing Christian Eriksen. Yeah. How big a loss is that going to be? Massive loss. Massive, massive, massive loss. He is a baller. He's one of those clever, clever players who he makes the opposition worry. So as a goalie, and I'm playing against Christian Eriksen, I'm worrying about set pieces. I'm worrying about balls over the top, little dinked balls in behind players. You've always got to be in your toes and that gets you on the back foot. And I think when the opposition realise you haven't got that anymore, they can press onto you a bit. So I don't think they're I don't think they're going to do as well as what they did last season. I still don't think they're going to get relegated. Um, I really like the fact that Brentford last year just sort of went, we're doing it. We're going to play the Brentford way. We're going to play out from the back. We're going to play lovely passing football. Um, mix it with a little bit of aerial now and then with, with even Tony up front. Um, but I think last season they did really, really well. And I was yep. buzzing. They're just nice to watch. They started the season off so well. That, that, that win against Arsenal. Very first day, day of the season, Friday night. It was great to see. Um, I don't think they're going to get relegated. I think they'll be absolutely fine. I'm going to go for 15th. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, perfect. Right, okay, let's go. We've got three left, by the way. Um, let's have a go. Ooh, the big boys, Man City. Surely I predicted them number one next last year, yeah? You got that one right. What? Was that like the only one I got right? I, I, yeah, I think it was. No, you got Norwich right in 20th. Come on, so the boys. So you got boys. first and last place I got first right. first and last. So obviously last season, predicted them to be first and they were first. And it wasn't quite as easy as what I expected or what everybody probably expected. Um, but they came through. The last game of the season, by the way, they're 2-0 down against Aston Villa. And if there's ever one team that you want to have to know that they'll get back in the game, it's Man City. And they did it. Went on to win 3-2, win the Premier League. 93 um, points. 93 points. Don't get me wrong. They've lost a few players. Um, you know, Raheem Sterling. I, I think he's a bit of a miss. I do. But I still think they've got enough quality to fill in those positions. And then obviously the big boy signing, you know, Erling Haaland. Um, wow. I just, I just think that he could just pulverise the Premier League this year we'll I, see won't I we? really do I think he could score an absolute bucket load of goals um, we had a bet you thought he's going to score over 30 I think he's going to score around 30 but I still think he's going to have a banging season and he's going to take the Premier League by storm so much so that there's there's no looking back for Man City this year they are just going to I think they're going to do it again Premier are they League. going to finally win the Champo? Premier League champions so I'm going first that's my prediction by the way they're going to win the Premier League first position okay that's who I'm going for Champions League Yes. They're going to do a double. Oh, big double. There could be a treble next year, to be honest with you. I think they might win one of the Cups, the Premier League, and then the Champions League. Well, they'll win the League Cup. They always win the League Cup. They always win the League Cup. Right, Man City first. Two teams left. Who we got? It is, oh, Aston Villa. Where did I predict Aston Villa last season? Okay, you predicted Villa in ninth. They finished 14th. Not a million miles away. No, I yeah. mean, what's the? Let's be honest with the, you know they spend money and everything, yeah. but you look at how competitive is right at the top. Exactly. What yeah. is the expectation for Villa really? The, the, Aston Villa are one of those teams who they want to try and be a top ten team, and they're there or thereabouts. They are. They're in that sort of like middle eight team cluster. There are a couple of seasons, in my opinion, behind Wolves. Yeah, I'd say so. Of, of really stabilising. Yeah, I totally agree. I think last season showed that they they would win one week and they would lose the next and then they would draw. You didn't quite know what you were going to get from Aston Villa. They've got players. They have. They've got ability. They're a steady Premier League team. They're a middling Premier League team. I don't think they're going to get top 10 this season, though. I don't think they will. I think, um, I think it'll be a decent season for Aston Villa. I'm going to go 12th. 
Okay, and then on to the last one. I'm going to pull this one out the hat for you because actually this is good timing. Last season, you got dug out on this one, quite rightly so, but I think it's fair to say that I think it was your third or fourth game of the season with Watford when yep. you went down to the Amex, when you went down to Brighton, and we had a conversation afterwards that went something along the lines of, I fucked up with my prediction. A little bit, I did. Next up is Brighton. <laughs> Okay, Brighton. So, um, yeah, they took they took um, they took me and most of the Premier League by by surprise last season. I think a lot of team, a lot of people who were doing the predictions would have would have worried for Brighton last year. True, I think they would have done. Yeah, and you predicted 18th. Yeah, they finished ninth. Yeah, but I think it's more about how they play and the manager. Exactly. Isn't it? Yeah, Graham Potter has got them playing a style of football which is so tough to play against. Honestly, they are. So we played them second game of the season. We got absolutely pumped away at the Amex. Honestly, we got absolutely pumped. They were brilliant. They ran us off the park. The style of football they play, they've got a good backbone to the team. The goalie is top class. Neil Mopay, players like that. Uh, big loss with Yves Basuma going to Tottenham. Big, big loss. Um, but I still think they've got players to cover in that position. I really do. Um, and I think the manager alone is, is, is a few positions higher just because of him, the way that they get playing. Um, They've got a good core of players. Danny Welbeck, for example, just proven reliable Premier League players. And I've got to apologise for me saying that they'll finish in the bottom three last season. They didn't. They they smashed it last year. But I don't think they're going to get top 10 this year. I don't. Do you not? I think they're going to fall just short. I think they're going to have a good season. 11th position, Brighton. There we go. There we go. Boom. Okay, it's giveaway time. Two of you lovely, lucky people are going to be winning these Premier League match balls. All you've got to do is give this video a big old like, get in the comments down below, then head yourself over to the Cycling GK Instagram page and give this post a like. And I will pick two of you at random and you'll have these bad boys winging their way to you. Thank you for watching. I will see you all soon. How's your hands? Come on, the boys. Come on, in the face. <laughs> He's still got it. He's still got it. <laughs>